Okay, now I begin once again. So Gregory, I invite you at any time you you need to go to my life and then ask to share the, to get into, okay? This uh, talk will be in English with Gregory Leroy, uh, a dealer and curator of photography and art, but basically also in Latin American photography specialist. He is in Paris, so now we will begin. Let's see how it works. There you are. Hi, Lynn. How are you? So, hey, hi, Gregory. You hear me fine? Hey, how are you? Fine. So we we see if we if we can talk about all this that we have uh, suggested to do. Yes. So, Tell me. You can you can read the questions down on the bottom. On the bottom, I see the name of a few people who are looking at okay. the video. Okay. It yeah. could be that, that, that in some time or some, some moment, they make a question. So okay. if they make a question and you want to answer, you, you can go on. Okay? okay. So basically, I have made a presentation of you that you are a curator and art dealer, but not only in photo or only in photography? Only in photography. Well... Curator, mostly photography, on, sorry, only photography. Dealer, uh, sometimes in painting, but that's not the, the bulk of my activity. I'm, I'm really specializing in Latin American photography, as you, as you know. Yes, I, I know, but um, as you have put art, I, I am asking. So well, the people that are there... I, I sometimes have a few paintings to sell, yes, yes. Okay. But only uh, Latin American. So, uh, we have made some questions to, to talk about. Okay. And I would like that you explain uh, how you select the photos and what kind of photos do you like or, or if you have some photos for or your own collection. Okay, my own collection. Yes, I do. Okay, so um, why Latin America? As you know, uh, or, or you might not know, uh, my wife is Venezuelan, and that was um, probably the main reason when I started to get into Latin American photography. Uh, we've been married for almost 20 years. We used to go a lot to Caracas um, to visit her parents, and I still travel there at least once a year. So I got really interested in the photography scene over there. Um, there was some amazing photographers working in Venezuela from the 40s to today. And I realized that most of the photographers were absolutely unknown in Europe and in the US. Uh, at the time, I was uh, working at Sotheby's as, uh, in, the, in the auction house business, and I was specializing in photography in the auction house. Um, and I wanted to, you know, introduce the collectors and the museums in Europe and the U.S. to Latin American photography. Um, at, except for a few very famous Mexican photographers, like Alvarez Bravo, or a bit younger, uh, Graciela Iturbide, most of the museum uh, had almost nothing in terms of Latin American photography in their collection. And I thought it was an opportunity to, you know, to be the only one to propose this, this type of work. Um, and then, uh, by chance, I um, started traveling a lot to Mexico, and uh, I've specialized a lot in Mexican photography for the last 10 years now. Um, so, yeah. So, that's why Latin America, because I was the only one to do it, uh, except for Spencer Trockmorton in New York, who's my dear colleague and friend. Uh, we are almost the, the two only galleries I mean, outside of, of Latin America, who work mostly with Latin American material. Okay. So um, I have just talked to Spencer, and I understand that Norberto has buy and has sold also some photos to you, and he, he will yeah. share us in a minute. Okay. So we have talked a lot with, uh, also with Norberto, but um, the, the world has changed. So one of the questions is, how do you see in the future 
the the market for the art and especially for the photos? Uh, I'm not worried at all. Um, most of my clients, as you know, Karim, are museums. Um, they're not going to go away. Um, I think we might have a crisis in the art world, but it's going to affect mostly, sadly, young artists and uh, I would say young gallery. Um, I, I am more of an antiquarian of photography. I, I sell photographs from artists that are already well-known, established. Most of them are dead. I mean, I, I don't think I have any living artist uh, for sale. Uh, and uh, the museums still have to buy a lot of these artists because they don't have it in their collection. So I'm not personally worried. Um, but if I was uh, a gallery working with you know, mid-career artists, I, I could be worried, yes. Okay. And um, what kind of photos or photograms you you want to you have send me some photos to show it in, in this life and I yes. see a beautiful photogram you know I am I, I like very specially the photograms I think photograms has a plus on over the photo yeah um, well because photograms are unique objects uh, that's the real definition of a photograph it's a unique object and usually photography is not unique it's a it's a multiple so that's probably why you like uh, a photograph is that, you know, you can sell it for way more price because that's a unique piece. It, it makes it more like a painting. Um, the photographs I sent you are from the very beginning of photography in Latin America uh, to some uh, probably 70s or 80s photographs. Um, one of the reasons why photography uh, has such an appeal to me is that it's like a time machine and cities like Caracas or Mexico has been uh, has changed so much that they're barely unrecognizable and to be able to to travel 150 years ago and see what Caracas looked like in the 1860s uh, or what um, Mexico looked like in the 1870s is for me invaluable. And um, I'm probably one of the few dealers who works with 19th and 20th century material. Uh, usually the market are a bit separated. And there's few collectors today who uh, collect from the very beginning of photography to today, you know. Uh, it's 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 too big. You have to um, probably specialize in a, in a small area of collection. But I really like old photographs. Um, they're difficult to sell at the moment because they're extremely fragile. And a 19th century photography, especially if it's a important one in, and you've paid a lot of money, uh, is something you don't want to put on the wall because light would um, damage it. And, and there's less and less people who want to buy photographs and put it in a drawer. Uh, you know, I understand that people want to put it on the wall. So 19th century photography is a, is a niche in the niche of Latin American photography. And it's mostly, it's mostly for museum or for my collection because I, I really enjoy them. Now, the other question that I have uh, proposed to you is, why do you like... Uh, especially Latin America, which because your your wife or because you have seen a niche in the market of Latin American photography, like Ramorton. Oh, I've, I've seen a niche. Uh, I've seen a market that I could, uh, you know, really uh, corner in a way. Um, and then uh, my my job is to source these photographs so to travel a lot and i really enjoy traveling to latin america um i'm, I'm desperate at the moment uh, because i cannot fly anywhere um uh, and i'm looking forward to go you know to mexico as soon as possible yes so it's it's pleasant to travel 
to Mexico or to other country over there. Uh, people are nice, and and uh, and there's a lot of great artists who worked in Latin America during the 20th century, um, from Europe and from uh, and from uh, Latin, uh, the, the proper countries of uh, America Latina. That's something interesting, and, and you know it, is that um, a lot, a, a surprisingly large proportion of the great Latin American photographers were immigrants. Yes. Like your I, father. I would uh, say the 90 or the 90%. Yeah. In, in Brazil, uh, it's, you know, almost all of them were born outside of Brazil. I mean, the great modernists of Brazil. In Caracas, uh, you have, you know, Barbara Brondley and Paulo Gasparini were are probably the two most famous um, photographers from the second part of the 20th century. Brondley was born in Switzerland and Gasparini is Italian. Uh, in Mexico, it's the same. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. And then there's some great, great schools. And, and we thought that... It's not that Latin American photography is completely separated uh, because, you know, they knew what was going on in the U.S. and they knew what was going on in Europe. And there was a lot of interchange between um, artists in Mexico and France, for example. Uh, Cartier Bresson, when he traveled to Mexico, um, was changed by Mexico. And you could say the same by Western. Western is sometimes considered one of the greatest or the great uh, photographer of the 20th century. Uh, Cartier Bresson could be the other name you mentioned for that. And they both worked in Mexico and both came out of Mexico and returned to US or France, completely changed. So um, there's an amazing um, amount of great artists. They're not well known. Uh, some of the archive is still in Mexico or in Venezuela or you know, in every country or in Argentina. And it's a, it's a, it's a gold mine, basically. You know that um, Andre Cartes, his mm -hmm. brother, yes. has been living in Argentina. And in the 60s, he has had a big exhibition here in the Argentina. Uh, so yeah, well, yeah, of course. You know, so also, he was here, but I have not seen photos from him from Argentina. I don't know. If surprisingly, I think I choose most of the photographs I sent you are from uh, uh, people who were born, most of them outside of uh, Latin America. I sent you a portrait of Anita Brenner by Tina Bodotti, an Italian. Um, then I sent you Barbara Brandley, a Cationa. Hungarian woman who moved to Mexico. Um, yeah, it would be a, a book to write about what Latin American photography gained from immigration, uh, and uh, especially from uh, Jewish immigration in Latin America. But that's another, that's another subject. Uh, yeah, so I collect, um, I have three main collections. I collect um, the great Venezuelan photographers, especially um, early views of Caracas, because that's extremely rare. Caracas was not uh, a very uh, rich um, city. There was very few commercial photographers in, in Caracas in the 19th century. It was less visited than Mexico, Buenos Aires, or or even Lima. So, um, and uh, on top of that, the climate of Caracas is absolutely terrible for all photographs. You know that the all photographs is made of uh, albumen. Albumen is egg white. So with um, heat and humidity, all these old photographs are, are fading to the point of uh, being completely worthless. So when you find something good about Caracas in the 19th century, it's, it's really a treat and a, and, a, and, and a treasure. So I have a collection of photographs of Caracas. I have a collection of photographs of Mexico. Obviously, I try to keep once in a while a good photograph for myself and not 
cannot sell it. And uh, my last uh, collection is about indigenous people of uh, the Americas, South Americas mostly, and I love uh, the first photographs of, of the Amazonian Indians. You have uploaded um, recently in Instagram too. One it was a guy with the, the leg that it was cut. Ah. That, that was from Amazonia, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have remember you the photo? The, have you seen the photo I, I, I posted recently about these um, Indians in 1943? <clears throat> and um, a magazine from Rio de Janeiro sent a plane uh, to fly over the village. And they had never seen a plane. And the whole men of the village came out with their bow and arrow and tried to shoot down the plane. And... Uh, <laughs> Those photographs are absolutely amazing. I, I, I really, uh, um, I love it. Uh, that, that's actually one of the main issues of being a dealer is that if you're a dealer and you love photography, sometimes it's very difficult to sell because you want to keep them for yourself. And, uh, you know, you have to balance the income for the family and, and your taste and, and love for photography. Uh, and I, I've, I've had some time uh, to sell photographs uh, that I regret selling. I, I'm, I'm desperate sometimes to sell a, a, a print that I know I will never find back. You have not met my father, no? No. 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 You know that he has begun to collect photos in the 70s. Well, there was, a, there was a legend in Paris 10 years ago that your father had the best Baldus album uh, yes, for it. some reason that he found in uh, in Buenos Aires and everybody was talking about this Baldus album in Buenos Aires yeah, and but I he has your father, right? he has sold it many years ago when when I have traveled a lot to New York before uh -huh. I have met you sometimes I have taken uh, some albums and photos from the collection from my father and sold it to different collectors in the okay. in that was in the 90s 90s, yeah. Yes. So, so you and, um, started collecting photography? Uh, I still have. I still have. I, I have inherited 28,000 photos from my father, mm -hmm. from his collection, and only 4,000 from his own vintage copies. So the collection was larger than, than his own, uh, own work. His own, uh, work, yes. But, um, well, he has dedicated his, himself to buy and sell photo machines and, and also photos. Mm -hmm. But his economical situation was always very worst in Argentina. So he has <laughs> sold a lot. Many people from Japan has come to buy to him once in a year. And they, know, they have known that uh, they have had these this things. Yes. And you still have 19th century photography or mostly 20th century? Mm, not too much. Not too much. Because, mm -hmm. um, as you say, the humidity in the, in the home from my father, you have some photos from my father right now. And if you look uh, closer, you will see that uh, I don't know if, if they have or not some fungus but uh, yeah. many many of the photos has been because the humidity be destroyed not the negative but uh, and he has not had has the money to keep his collection in a, in a good way to protect them mm -hmm. yeah so there's, there's no way to protect photography from humidity i mean you have to have a climate control room and that's the only way and yes Except for a few museums, it was extremely rare to have that in the 70s or 80s. Yes. So, and you also make evaluation and, and, and from, from archives and all kind of, of stuff yeah. behind yeah. Your, uh, your work as a dealer. Well, I, I, I sold a lot of archives and I'm still selling archives. Uh, I, I just... Uh, I cannot name the, the, the photographer, but I just sold um, the archive of a very important Latin American photographer to the Getty Museums a couple of months ago. Um, 
it's 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 very interesting to sell all archives to museums because um, I'm sure that the work is going to be protected, not only the prints but the negatives. It's it's extremely difficult to store negatives, um, and um, there's no interest in showing them. So a museum. Um, will not buy the negatives, they will accept to take care of them. You know, you don't sell the negatives. But um, on the long term, if you're a research center, it's extremely important to have the whole body of work of the artist. And so now when I'm selling archive, I'm trying to make the museum accept to take care of the negative, to digitalize everything and, and make it available on, at least online to researchers all over the world. Yes. And and what you have mentioned, it's also important. You have been with Marzona in Berlin. I don't know if you have yeah. talked to him a little more. But yeah. one one of the the problems that many photographers have, the, the, the archive is very big. And normally the family, the kids, they have their own business and they mm -hmm. don't are interested to keep it. Mm -hmm. So he has put together a foundation in Poland to take care of, of, of the archives. And yeah. I, I think that that's a good um, good point. And um, in the future, I guess, m more museums and more, more foundation and people will, will try to, to keep and, and, as you say, digitalize and see what... what, what in yeah. the, uh, Karim, the problem with negative... Um, is that it's extremely time consuming. Um, the body of a photographer, let's say, is 1,000 prints, the body of work of a, of a photographer. But he chose these 1,000 prints from 40,000 negatives. That's exactly the reason. The is going to get 40,000 negatives, of which uh, only 1,000 were deemed good enough to be printed. But still, they have to take care of everything. They have to digitalize everything. And they have to store everything in a safe way. So it's, it's quite an investment for a museum to take charge of a large amount of negative. Yes, I know. And I'm not, uh, we have not talked too much, but I, I, I have a question that I, I have not brighted to you. Mm -hmm. Do you care? on the name of the photographer, or do you select the photos because you like them? No, I, I, there's, a, there's a lot of photographs in my collection that are anonymous, um, especially the 19th century photography in Latin America. It's extremely rare to know who is the photographer, but I love them anyway. Um, and I always assume that at some point I'll, I'll I'll find the name of the photographer. So yeah, I collect as, as a collector. I don't necessarily look at the name of the photographer. As a dealer, it's always easier to sell a photograph by a famous photographer. It's, but yes, it's, of course. <laughs> so do you want that we show some photos and you talk about the photos? Please, please. OK. So let's see how we do this. I don't know. Here you have the first one. Ah, okay. Yolanda Andrade. Um, that's a print I was supposed to show in New York at the APAD I fair think. this April. And as you know, the fair was canceled. Um, so I'm going to show it at Paris Photo in November. Uh, she is a Mexican photographer, probably in her late 60s. And this photograph is from the late 70s, if I remember well. And uh, I really like the mask this guy is wearing. That's why I put it uh, on my Instagram recently. I, I did a whole series of mask uh, photographs for obvious reasons. Um, she is probably the only living photographer I'm working with at the moment. And actually, it's pleasant to have someone alive to talk to. 
Well, let's go to the other one. I'm sorry, but I cannot erase my, my face. <laughs> Don't worry. It's, uh, it's the famous view of the studio of Baragad in Mexico City by Armando Salas, Portugal. Armando is a photographer I absolutely love. And uh, maybe you know Armando Hijo. I don't know if you know him. And if you don't, you should, because you have both um, great photographer as father, and, and you're running the archive both. And, and you, you deal with the same issues and problems. Um, I'm working a lot with the, the Armando Hijo, who is, is the son of Armando Salas Portugal. Armando Salas Portugas was a very good friend of Baragan. So he's mostly known for the architectural uh, photography. They've been published pretty much everywhere. He has published many books on Baragan houses. Uh, but he was also a very interesting experimental photographer. And uh, yeah, that's one of the photographers I'm, I'm really happy to work with. Which... Um... He has died when? He died probably 20 years ago. 20 years. Yeah. Okay. The first photographs are, are from the 40s and he worked until the 80s. Uh, Let's go yeah. here. So that's Anita Brenner uh, by uh, Tina Modotti. Um, and this photograph is very important to me because one of the first uh, great collection I worked with in, in Mexico was the archive of Anita Brenner. Anita Brenner was a, an American uh, woman who moved to Mexico in the early 1920s. She became very good friend with Edward Weston, with Tina Bodotti, and uh, she hired Weston to take photographs for a book about Mexican folk arts she was publishing. And most of the great Mexican uh, Edward Weston photographs were made for her. And she had an archive that had over 400 vintage Weston and Modotis, which is, a, you know, obviously a treasure. And um, he asked me to evaluate the collection and eventually sell it, which we did. Okay. I want to, to mention, and I will mention it also in Spanish, uh, when we finish with the photos, uh, anybody who wants to make a question to Gregory, please write it down. Uh, if you write it in Spanish and translate it to him. Así no, que I, si I, I, can, hacer... I, can read, I can read Spanish, but I cannot answer in Spanish. So I'll answer okay, in si alguien quiere hacer una pregunta, escribe en castellano. Y después eh, lo traducimos y vamos a ver cómo lo podemos manejar. Ok, here you have a, a ring. That's uh, Eva Sulza. Eva Sulza was a Swiss woman. Uh, she worked in Mexico with photography only a couple of years. Uh, she was the lover of uh, Wolfgang Palen, uh, another um, great Mexican surrealist painter. Uh, and this print is amazingly rare. Um, I showed it at Zona Maco uh, photo in Mexico in February and sold it immediately. And, and, and I could have said it 20 times because every museum wanted that. Uh, but sadly, I had one. Which was the name? Because I have not... Uh... Eva Sulzer. Eva Sulzer. Okay. Yeah, she's... She, well, okay. This is a very famous uh, photograph by uh, Katy Orna. Katy Orna was, um, was a Hungarian who um, started photography in Hungary, then moved to Spain uh, during the Spanish Revolution. Uh, uh, after the Civil War, or during the Civil War, she had to move back to Paris. And from there, when the Nazi invaded France, she uh, took one of the last boats to Mexico. Um, she spent the whole rest of her life in Mexico City, so she's mostly considered a Mexican photographer. But with this, you know, European, in this case, Eastern European uh, background, 
uh, that you can feel in the photography, I guess. Uh, this is the this image is is the cover of the catalog uh, of her show at Jodhpur that was probably seven eight years ago. Uh, to the people, as I I I don't say I don't see the the complete photo. It's cut. I see it cut. It. I don't know how you see it, but it I is, have published it, it on it, Instagram. I see, so I it, see it cut too. I see it cut. Too. Okay, if somebody wants to see it completely, they can go to the Instagram and see it completely after that. Okay, here you have other one. Uh, this is back, oh, also that's um, that's a photograph that I would not like to sell because there's only one vintage print of that. It's Barbara Brandley uh, in Caracas in seventy one, seventy two. Uh, Barbara Brandley published a, a book called uh, named uh, Sistema Nervioso that is probably one of the greatest Latin American photo books of the 20th century. Um, she passed away, I would say 13, 14 years ago. And I had the chance to meet her a couple of years uh, before that. She was an old lady. Um, no one had ever taken any interest in her photography, but I had discovered the book and I loved it. And I went to her house in Caracas and bought um, a large bulk of her vintage prints. And I'm resisting selling it for the moment. Uh, so this is in my personal collection. You have mentioned photo books. I know my father yeah. has had photo books and it's very important for some, some uh, dealers to have photo books because the photo books are especially important not only to see the author of some po uh, of some photos because in this period you know they have even not put a stamp or the name mm -hmm. and, and you can buy some sometimes photos that you don't know the author but if you have the book it's very important like uh, something where you can go to to see it, no you collect photo books i do i do i do um some of them are now very expensive, obviously, and extremely rare. Um, as for photography, most of uh, the big city of Latin America climate is not good for paper. So some of the books are in bad condition. But when you find a good one, it's, it's, uh, it's great. And uh, there's a lot of the photographers I love that I discovered through their books, obviously, because there's... Uh, there was no publication, no museum interested in them. So it's, it's mostly true books that I discovered a lot of these people. The photograph? So Emilio Amero. Emilio Amero uh, was a Mexican painter, um, a muralist painter from the generation of Siqueiros and Diego Rivera. And in the 30s and only in the 30s, he... Uh, worked with uh, photography. This photogram is one of his first photograms. It's, it's uh, from 1940. Um, and uh, we had it at Paris Photo this year and it was sold to an American museum. So you'll be able to see it uh, quickly on the wall, I hope. Um, as I told you already, what I loved about photogram is that it's a unique object. Um, there's, there's few photographs that are unique. Uh, daguerreotype is, which also I love, and, and photogram, and, and makes uh, the, the, the object even more valuable. You want to explain how a photogram is done? Because I have explained it in Spanish, because I have been okay. working with a my father. And... A photogram is a, is a is a photography without a camera. Basically, you put the paper in the darkroom directly. You um, put on the paper some object that you can see clearly on these photograms. And then you put light on the paper. You expose the paper. And you will get the shadow of the object or objects that you put on the paper. Um, and it's not, uh, as you don't have a negative, you cannot reprint it. So you're, you're, you just have the one print you did directly in the lab. 
Yes, uh, you know that many people has contacted me in the past. I have. Um, I have are you familiar with with Jeffrey Batchen? Jeffrey Batchen. No, I don't know him. Who is he? He is from New Zealand. Okay. And and he has made a beautiful book. It was the first book that I have. Uh, they have asked me about uh, photographs for my father. It's the name is Cameraless Photography. Mm -hmm. Beautiful book. It was uh, five years ago, I guess. Okay. Well, here we have the nude. I hope that Instagram doesn't cut us. <laughs> okay, it's a uh, it's a very beautiful image. Um, again, by Emilio Amero from 1932. Um, Amero is one of the is like a unique avant-garde uh, artist in photography for the Latin Americans. Uh, it's it's. Very unusual. It doesn't look like anything else that was done either in France or the U.S. or even in Mexico. And uh, and most of the prints are unique, like this one. You know that in the collection from my father, when I have inherited, mm -hmm. all the nude, nude photos has been separated. Okay. Because I don't know why he 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 don't wanted that my mother see them. Okay. He has, he has collected nude photos, and I have some, some still. Ah, okay. So very, very nude beautiful photos one. not from him. No, no, no. He has never made nude photos, but okay. uh, he has bought uh, and collected. And you know why he never made nude photos? I. Do you know why he never made nude photos? No. No. Okay. In the in all the negatives that I have go over. Uh, with a friend that is looking on this uh, this life, uh, Luca Silemi, we mm -hmm. have scanned with two other friends practically fifty thousand photos from my father. Wow! In, in a medium resolution, so and, okay. and we have we have put it uh, together. Brock Morton has given me the the address of Artbase. I have shown it the other day. So I have everything organized. If you want to see how many photos I have from the Obelisk or from Florida Street, I can show it to you. But I have no not find any nude photos, even not from my mother. Well, probably it didn't like the intimacy with the model that uh, is necessary. Yes. So here you have another one. It's probably the same auto. Okay, this this print is um, is interesting. It's it's the uh, Pyramide de Teotihuacan by Edward Weston. I've had at least three prints of the same image, but this one was so much more beautiful that um, we priced it, I think, five times more than the other one. Uh, this is a platinum print, and you know how valuable platinum is. It's probably the best uh, printing process in photography. It will last forever, and, and you have a, a richness in, in the colors that is absolutely great. Uh, we had it in, in Paris for two, two years ago, sold it to great collection, and um, this is one of the things that I would I could not afford for myself, sadly, but um, that's one of the reasons I love photography, this type of image and in this type of prints. Okay, that's, that's especially for the Mexican, this image. I don't know if any Mexican is looking. This is Reforma. Yeah, hey, I know. Uh, La Glorieta de Colón. Uh, in uh, 1909. Um, That's when I Polanco, was no? About photography being a time machine, I was thinking about these photographs. Because if you, if you know Mexico City today, uh, it, my God, it has changed a lot. And um, this, these photographs uh, is, is in my personal collection. I'm also not really in a hurry to sell it. I like the, the, the lights and the shadows. We have a, 
Uh, Argentine photographer. I don't know, know if you are familiar with Juan Di Sandro. No, no, I don't know him. Juan Di Sandro was a photo reporter from uh, a newspaper, La Nación, here. Mm -hmm. And he has made beautiful prints and photos by night. It was okay. the same like this uh, format. Your father did some great ones too. In the I have 50s, separated right? the, the, because uh, Alexis and La Riviere has asked me one day to show him what I have uh, uh, from Buenos Aires by night. Yeah, they have not bought nothing, images. but I have them here, yes. Yeah, they're great images. They're yes. Great images. Well, it's cut again. Uh, well, it's, it's cut. It's uh, Paolo Gasparini. Um, one of my favorite photographers. Uh, Paolo is uh, in his mid-80s, um, still traveling a lot, still taking some photographs, um, and probably the greatest photographer in, in Venezuela for the, you know, the last 40 years. Um, and, pro and, and actually one of the best everywhere because every print he makes is, is amazing. Uh, okay, another time machine. Uh, this is Caracas, uh, the, the very center of Caracas in the 1870s. Um, and also, if you know Caracas today, it's, it's quite uh, mind-blowing to see what it looked like uh, 140 years ago. I have invited Ella Cisneros to come to the talk, but I don't see her. But I, I don't know if she has a prince from Caracas. I don't know really. No, and I, I don't, she's mostly into more contemporary photography. I don't know if she's... Uh, she likes subjective photography. Photographs. Yeah, she likes subjective photographies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have... 50 minutes more. I don't know if somebody wants to make a question to Gregory so he can answer. And it would appear down, no? It should be down, yes, if somebody okay. wants to. I'm going to have a cigarette in the meantime, okay? I have a question. Um, you are not very familiar with Argentine photographers. Um, I'm familiar with Horacio and, and your father, basically, you know, that's, um, for some reason, um, you know, I keep going to the same places and, and, uh, obviously for family reason, Caracas and Mexico also, because I have a lot of clients there and Buenos Aires is so far away, my dear, that it's. <laughs> You know, it's a long, long way to go spend a week looking for photographs over there. But yeah, I should, I should do it, uh, and, and I hope to do it once. Well, I have talked in these days with somebody about some archives, and I will send you later the information. Some good friends you know, from my father. That... I love archives because I love to look into boxes and find the great stuff and uh okay um you of course anthropologicals at the moment you can't because um there's no um foundation taking care of his work but you know he's alive and 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 it's it's still a work in progress in a way um but um I will let you know, uh, I think a few museums are looking into his um, work. Um, I sold a lot of his photographs to the MoMA in New York, so you can check the MoMA website. Um, and also, um, Dorena Sofia in Madrid has some photographs of him. Uh, but there's no website with all his photographs at the moment. Um, it will happen soon. So, um, if somebody has a question to do, we have some minutes more. 
I have to go cooking soon, my dear. You, it's, you, it's late you, already. I will show you something. Okay, please. Here you have vintage fruto from Bolivia. Ah, that's nice. I love Indians. That. Indians. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, yes, yes, you're right again, Rose Anthropology, because there's, um, there hasn't been many books about uh, Venezuelan photography. Um, Maria Teresa Bulton published at least three that are really interesting. Um, but there's no website, for example, from um, a museum in, in Venezuela that is uh, that gives you a lot of uh, example of Venezuelan photographers. Um, there's no photography museum in, in Venezuela, so it's difficult to get the books. Uh, check the Maria Teresa Bilton book. They're interesting and historical. This is familiar to you? I love it. I love it. You have one or not? No, I don't. Ricardo I don't. Sanso, I, I think you have... Yeah, 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 yeah. but I, I don't have this one. It's not this one that you sent me. This, uh, I have this one. I have this one. We'll, ah, okay. We will show it in, we will show it in, uh, in Paris Photo. And this you don't have? This one I don't have, no. Well, well this is completely unknown. The name is Juan Bequis. This was from, from the forum group. Okay. You have seen this portfolio or not? No, I have only the I have some so portfolio, but it's not complete. Ah, it's not complete. Okay, no. and I I guess the the forum portfolio, uh, I guess that um, Alexis and La Riviere has one. I don't know. I have ah, okay. still one of them. That okay. is in New I'd York. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Here you have uh, this Jose Costa. Yeah, those. This is all great. This is all great. This is Max Jacobi. You know Max Jacobi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He died in in Germany. And this is Rodolfo Osterman. Yeah. No, but the, those are all the great uh, photographers of Argentina. Yes, but there are more. There are more. There. This is the living room from my father, and there is. My father, this is Max Jacobi. There is a painting from my father. All the photo books. <laughs> so, okay. So if nobody has any question for Gregory, I, I have oh, enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed? I did. It was yes? pleasant. It was pleasant. It's a good idea to do this kind of stuff in these days and to yeah. show around. I am not so sure, like you, that the Paris photo will happen again. Let's be optimistic. Yeah, I am optimistic. I would like you know, to travel. You know, Karim, I think it's going to happen. I'm not sure that many people are going to travel from outside Europe for Paris Photo, but I'm, yes. I'm pretty confident it's going to happen. Yes. How many people will be able to travel from the US and from Argentina is another question. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah. We are here completely isolated. I, I don't know how is the situation there in France. We are still locked down, no? No, we we got out of lockdown today, this morning, Thursday. Oh, okay. And in, in Paris, I don't have a garden like you to, you know, lie in my chair during the afternoon. So, I, I can walk here. At least I can walk. Yeah. And this has been my view. I have my little balcony with some flowers and, you know, but this has been my view for the last uh, two months. Two months. Yeah. So thank you a lot and uh, talk to you soon, I hope. Okay. Thank you very much, Gregory. And, thank you. Uh, we stay in contact, okay? We do.